नमस्कार लर्नर्स आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू इन अनो यूर स्टूडियो एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू हैव सम डेलीब्रेशंस ऑन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ कोर्स 504 ऑफ डिप्लोमा ऑफ एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन द नेम ऑफ द टॉपिक इज कंसेप्ट मैपिंग ऑफ टीचिंग लर्निंग मैथमेटिक्स एट एलिमेंट्री स्टेज फ्रेंड्स we have with us today dr jehan walia who is going to deliberate on this topic he is assistant professor in department of educational studies central university of jammu so he is going to throw light on the various issues related to this topic so i welcome you sir in the studio well thank you uh, sir now i would like to ask Uh, would you like to tell us what actually concept mapping in mathematics is thank you dr aman uh, welcome to uh, uh, this diploma in elementary education course 504 program i am here to talk about concept mapping of teaching learning of mathematics at elementary stage how do we use concept mapping and what is concept mapping uh, with this uh, video interaction you all will be able to understand the meaning of concept mapping how is concept mapping used you will be able to understand various aspects of concept mapping and also you will be able to understand how do we design how do we make up concept mapping and at the last i'm sure you will be able to understand the advantages and the basic benefits of concept mapping in teaching learning of mathematics first of all i will talk about concept mapping the meaning of concept mapping and some kind of issues related to concept mapping a concept map is basically a diagram that depicts relationship between concepts dear learners concept mapping is uh, popularly used in sciences mainly for mathematics because mathematics we have so many uh, concepts which are interdependent which are interrelated from one concept you have consequentially another concept so how do we connect various concepts and lead for the larger concept how do we divide small concept in micro concepts subunits and all that and then we actually go for the generalization of the things that's what we do in concept mapping so it's a basically a graphical tool that we can use to organize and sometimes more important to visualize content of lesson or theme in order to just see that how does that content travel how does that content is organized we use uh, concept mapping the term concepts are commonly written in balloons you will see in uh, the discussion ahead i'll be sharing with some examples that uh, we use some balloons we use some blocks which are linked to each other with lines and if needed words that describe the relationship between them are also connected with some uh, arrows and other aspects there are few graphical presentations similar on the first side but difference is in their approach and functionally so in the use also the most similar among them are mind maps uh, though i won't be talking about mind map but you need to understand there is another concept related to concept map that is mind map but mind maps serve a different purpose they help with memory and can be used as in brainstorming as a very effective tool for concept mapping is basically used for concept attainment that's a basic meaning of the concept concept map is also a visual tool for representing knowledge relationship in a concept map lines are drawn between pairs of concept to denote relationship between the concept linking words on the lines indicate how pairs of concepts are related in this way propositions indicating particular relationship between concepts may be discerned concept mapping 
has frequently been used as a pedagogical tool to help students learn more meaningfully and form a conceptual understanding of the subject. Sir, you beautifully described uh, the definition part or what actually concept mapping is. Now, uh, from definitional or journal part of concept mapping, I would like to ask you that in actually, in actual situations, how do we use a concept mapping as a concept in various mathematics topics? Uh, thank you, Dr. Saab. Uh, it's a very relevant question because uh, in course 504, we are dealing with teaching learning process of mathematics. So, that I will confine my discussion to about concept mapping to mathematics. And uh, Dr. Saab, this uh, concept mapping is very effectively used for conceptualization of mathematical concepts. And uh, concept maps have a hierarchical structure. Mapping is the creative process of organizing content and that can be used for the planning of the lesson. That means teacher can also use concept mapping for planning of the lesson. Learning the complex concept, there are some concepts which are complex, so we make concept maps. And uh, also sometimes for the individual and group work in mathematics, we can use concept mapping. When we distribute the work to the students, when we designate work to the students, maybe a group task or maybe individual task, we can use concept map, we can give you the part of that map to one student or a group of students, another part to another group of students. That could be uh, the kind of strategy we can use. And in addition to the understanding the concepts, we can use even for the completion of any task in mathematics. And a uh, very interesting fact that this concept mapping is also very helpful in developing mathematical literacy. We can develop mathematical literacy and uh, through concept map and uh, in one of the lessons uh, I have been sharing with the people teachers or uh, uh, DLA students that uh, uh, mathematical thinking because we need to develop the mathematical thinking or so called mathematization of the whole teaching learning process. And their concept mapping plays a very vital role. They are used for, as uh, fostering and the, it help in fostering that mathematical thinking. That is the main concept. Math conceptual mapping can also be applied to other school subjects and to everyday life. Because when we try to connect maths with other school subjects, there also we can use uh, concept mapping. Once accepted, making concept maps become the very successful learning. The, the moment you accept it, the moment you actually understand it, uh, you can make concept maps for the successful teaching learning process. Sir, you beautifully described uh, the concept behind concept mapping in mathematics. But sir, we all know there are some backgrounds behind the formulation of any concept. So, I would like to ask you what are the basic theoretical background behind this topic, behind concept mapping in mathematics particularly. So, would you like to throw some light? Yeah, uh, very relevant question because uh, concept mapping is uh, outcome of so many learning theories and uh, the main credit goes to the Ossobel theory of meaningful learning. Ossobel has given a theory of learning that is known as theory of meaningful learning, where he, he has given the background of, uh, basically, uh, Docs up, it's a theoretical background of the concept mapping, if we talk about it, refers to the constructivist epistemology, which was briefly mentioned above, uh, and uh, it was basically Ossobel theory of meaningful learning, that involves the assimilation of new concepts and proposition into existing cognitive structures. Uh, in simple sense, let me explain that uh, when we have uh, to create meaningful learning theories, we try to connect those concepts with some easy concepts and the concepts which are known to the students. So, a kind of hierarchy we create uh, in the concepts. Ultimately, sometimes students understand the most complex concept which they cannot understand uh, in a normal condition. So, we make, we draw concept maps. I will explain you all further. Uh, the cognitive scientist Ossobel in 1966 distinguished meaningful versus rote learning. 
because the concept mapping is against rote memorization, against rote learning. Uh, that means uh, we don't go for uh, the lowest level of learning of rote memorization. Rather, we go for the meaningful learning. We learn which is meaningful. We learn which is actually worth learning, and that's what we do in concept maps. Uh, we don't learn the whole thing. We learn the gist of that thing so that we understand that concept. You will see uh, now ahead. Uh, we'll be having some examples of meaningful learning or assimilation theory. Now. Uh, so, Talking further about this, when a question arises, when does uh, meaningful learning occur? What are the situation? Uh, we go for the meaningful learning because when we say meaningful learning, we are referring to the learning which is basically productive, which is basically assimilated. Everything we don't assimilate. So many things we come across, but we assimilate the things which are meaningful, which are worth in, uh, assimilating, with our, which are worth digesting. And that is the basic ideology of concept mapping. In concept mapping, new knowledge is integrated into various existing network of concepts. So, always we talk about existing network. And that network is developed in concept map. And it is also the proposition uh, network of concepts and proposition in the cognitive structures. We make some cognitive structures that means simple. Uh, things we divide the concept in various parts and subparts, and those subparts are basically shown and connected with the help of some balloons, with the help of some arrows, and all that. You will see now. Uh, new knowledge incorporates into specifically relevant existing concepts or propositions. That means the students uh, are familiar with some of the concepts. From those concepts, we start moving ahead and we try to connect those concepts, and new knowledge can be imparted to the students. There is the ability of explicit delineation of similarities and differences between related ideas. That means the concepts which are similar, we uh, keep in a different uh, cluster and the concepts which are not similar, we keep in different groups or subgroups. In that way, students try to understand what is that, how do we delineate the thoughts, what is the explicit and implicit thoughts about the concepts. On the contrary, Road learning occurs when the arbitrary verbatim of or in, in, in arbitrary verbatim incorporation of new information into cognitive structures takes place. That means uh, in verbatim directly, the student just take the direct thing without taking care of the connections, without taking care of the interconnections of the concepts, interdependence of the concepts, and what he has to do, he has to simply uh, go for the root memorization. So that is the point we need to understand. So learners, uh, Dr. Balia uh, clearly told us about the concept of concept mapping in mathematics and also he described the theoretical background behind concept ma mapping. Now the main thing is because in mathematics everything has to be applied. So I just want to ask you, sir, how we can uh, develop a concept map practically? So would you like to tell us and to our learners? Of course, uh, Dr. Aman. Uh, and dear uh, learners, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the phases, how do we develop concept maps? I am coming to the steps, the phases. Uh, the techniques we adopt for making, for drawing concept maps. Before that, again, let me brief talk about that uh, when a student of mathematics or teacher of maths uh, creates a concept map, they basically use that ideas in their, in their own words and help them to identify incorrect ideas and concepts. So that also helps in, because when you draw a concept map, you have to see which content has to be kept in the boxes and how to connect the things. So there uh, learning also takes place in the context of uh, finding the relationship. Uh, now I will explain you with the help of uh, a, a concert map. Uh, this is the concept map you can see that in concept map uh, concept of circle is given and uh, con from concept of circle we do talk about concept of circumference and concept of uh, center, 
and the concept of radius. These are the basic three issues which we take up for class 6th or 7th students. So, this is Doxop is a very clear uh, map of uh, circle which is concepts of circle where we are talking about circle and you see that left side we are talking about circumference and when we say circumference of circle. So, we have even given the definition with the help of a diagram drawn on the board or diagram somewhere shown in another uh, uh, situation that circumference has a length and it is related to the number of uh, the number or like uh, of uh, number p or what p what is p p is uh, basically the whole uh, concept related deleting the circle and uh, when we talk about uh, radius we say radius has a length r in one of it is one half the length d and length d is nothing but the diameter so here we are talking about the relationship between radius and diameter and right side you see that we are talking about the center so, in this way the whole concept of circle can be given just in one map and that map is directional map. You see that we are talking in terms of the center, we are talking in terms of radius, we are talking in terms of circumference, right side you see the center and we are saying that the center is the end point of the maybe that point and then it is the midpoint of the whole diagram, it is the equivalent from any two points because we understand the center uh, is equidistance from all points lying on the uh, uh, circumference of the circle. So, you, you, you also see some boxes uh, which are kept and also some kind of arrows shown and if this concept map students develop them. So, that would be the wonderful contribution of teachers or here teacher can also help them to develop this concept map and while developing the concept map students could learn so many things and therefore, learning would not be rote learning, the learning would be uh, conceptual and as Ossobel said that there will be meaningful learning, learning will be connected learning and the students will understand not one concept of circle only center or only about radius or only about circumference, but rather he will learn so many things together and he will get a connected knowledge and that is what actually when we talk about connectionism, uh, presently we are talking in terms of connectionism or constructivism. Uh, this would be a wonderful uh, thing in teaching of maths and other subjects also, but mainly for teaching of maths, students can have the ability, can develop the ability of connecting various concepts within that content area and connecting that concept with outside that connect area. I have another example Dr. Aman uh, that concept of triangle uh, when we talk about types of triangle on the basis of angles. So, there we can talk in terms of uh, types of triangle acute triangle, obtuse triangle and right angled triangle. Now, to give the concept of acute triangle we can again make a box talking about each angle is an acute angle that is the concept of acute triangle that in acute triangle every angle has to be here we can add more shapes downstairs I did not have the space otherwise students can add up more blocks and rather they can draw some diagrams also of acute triangle. Uh, similarly when we talk about obtuse triangle, obtuse triangle we have given another definition that it is one angle should be more than 90 degree that means at least one angle should be obtuse whereas, right angled triangle one of three angles should be 90 degree angle and remaining two could be uh, any like have to be acute, but one angle has to be 90 degree. So, you can add some pictures, you can add some pictures down here in these boxes and then you can make it more uh, kind of thing. So, this is uh, the kind of uh, example. Now, let me go back to the thing which you said that what could be the phases, how to develop a concept map. This is very, very important issue. Uh, how do we develop concept map and how do we start developing concept map? First thing is that we identify the main topic or the core concept. This is the first thing. When you draw the concept map, you first of all identify the main. For example, for the example I took up just now, 
the main topic was a uh, say circle this was the main topic so first we see what is the main or core topic in that diagram which i actually took up where i talked about radius i talked about center circumference their circle was the main concept or core concept and then you can have brainstorming look at the second step you can have brainstorming for everything known about the topic so you can ask the students or you can do the brainstorming involving the students every student should feel engaged and then you can connect this thing with various other aspects of circle they are familiar with they might have studied somewhere radius they might have studied somewhere circumference or the concept of center so you note down those things you share with the students do the brainstorming and then organize those informations information about radius information about center of circle information about circumference and even information about the area of circle whatsoever you organize that information according to the major points and then place look at the fourth step the place information on a map working from core concept to the major points to the significant details so we try to put up those informations like uh, as radius the circumference and the center uh, we keep them in small so we are just making a hierarchical order of the concept so that uh, you guys students are getting interconnected knowledge and also they are getting uh, those things together so this is you know way with when we talk about the whole two parts the concept of the stall psychologist and also the concept of uh, uh, giving the holistic knowledge this concept map is wonderful thing for them linking related and after placing those informations in different orders we link those related concepts with lines and arrows label each line in either propositional or prepositional form uh, whether it is connected with the uh, other we can we can interconnect if you look at the diagram which i had taken up in this diagram you see that uh, circumference radius and center have been given in the arrow form and they have also been connected with each other even the concept of diameter is also given down here because when you talk about radius you have to talk about that radius is half of the diameter so there are basically four concepts we are discussing in this concept map circumference radius diameter and center and all these concepts have been interconnected with each other so this is the that uh, the step that uh, let me quickly uh, summarize this thing that we identify the main topic or the core concept then we do the brainstorming for everything known about the topic we organize information according to the major points and we place information on a map and working from core concept to the major concept in the hierarchy of the concepts and talking about the connections and then we try to link this the fifth the last stage linking related concepts talks of is uh, the main part where one has to go for the meaningful learning because you have to connect radius with diameter you have to connect radius with the center you have to connect radius with the circumference you have to connect diameter with the circumference you have to connect diameter with the center so how do we make the links between those concepts it's very very important and then each line is propositional or it could be pre propositional it could be pro propositional that is the point uh, we talk about concept map sir after going through your discussion one question is coming in mind that isn't it uh, or using this concept mapping in mathematics would be a time consuming uh, for students or for teachers would you explain please yeah, doc sir uh, i don't think it's a time consuming because the total time taking up in various concepts understanding see we mathematics is a subject of interdependent contents every concept is connected with some more concepts in mathematics even different branches of mathematics like algebra trigonometry arithmetic and geometry all these are the interconnected branches so one concept you discuss you get connected with other concepts and within one concept you talk about intra uh, uh, concepts interconnected concepts so i don't think because uh, you are giving them the holistic knowledge with one concept map the ch learner the child will understand so many other concepts and the learning will be whole it will be holistic learning and in that case learning would be more meaningful time would be taken up because when we draw the diagrams but the thing which we have learned would be more connected with the things 
And uh, Dr. Sir, when we talk about, as you just said, that we talk about uh, the uh, points, let me here refer to some of the advantages of uh, this concept mapping. Uh, concept maps helps in perceiving the concepts and relationship uh, among all the concepts among the all content areas and also it helps in visualizing, organizing and distinguishing concepts by their importance. So that is the main thing that students visualize, students organize, students distinguish various concepts in the context of the importance. And, uh, it also helps in developing mathematical literacy uh, because uh, a student get familiar with so many mathematical concepts with one only one diagram and uh, his or her mathematical literacy also gets strengthened. Connecting a new knowledge with old one because students know many, so many things before they are introduced, with the, before they are exposed to any new knowledge. So how do they connect new knowledge with the old one that is through concept map and that is what you have seen that starting from because child has learned something about center in class 4th or 5th or maybe class 3rd and you are giving him the whole concept so he is connecting his old knowledge with the new knowledge which you are serving to him and applying mapping method to other contents could also be the point. Now uh, when we use concept map for teaching we, it helps in uh, giving them uh, I already shared with you all that teachers can use for concept mapping for effective teaching. Even teachers can frame their lesson plans. T teachers can uh, design their teaching learning strategies by concept map. You draw the concept map and you understand how much I have to deliver today, how much I have to deliver day after or tomorrow. And then you can plan your lesson accordingly, your time factor, your resources, everything on the basis of concept map. And I as also told you that uh, concept uh, map, constructing concept map, difficult concepts can be classified, can be arranged in a very systematic orders and you can allow the students, you can allow the students to uh, give more ideas and thoughts and information. Uh, thank you sir. You wonderfully explained the whole concept of concept mapping and we are delighted with your presence here and we are highly thankful to you sir thank you very much thank you thank you dr